bra 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 <laughs> this is Trondheim Norway and if this isn't the idyllic European scene right here what else is like this is this is fantastic and this is cool because this is my final destination on this trip that I'll be at I'm gonna go up to a cabin in the mountains so I'm about to go meet my guide in Guna that is going to shuttle me away into the into the wilds of the forest and hopefully <laughs> hopefully take me to our Airbnb Hope she's not a serial killer, so it should work out just great. I hope. Uh, I'm gonna take you along for the ride though as we find this last little leg of the journey. Let's go. Remember how we were talking about the most precious resources in the desert? This is my <laughs> second day uh, driving up the Pacific Coast Highway. This is a crazy adventure. <laughs> Welcome to my retreat in the mountains. <laughs> Guys, This the second part of this Norway video. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my guide or my, my host, Ingun, just picked me up from the train station, drove me up here. She did not want to be on camera, so I couldn't film any of the very sketchy roads on the way up but this is the house right here so let's walk inside and i want to show you around this place because it's absolutely the nicest airbnb i've ever gotten let's go okay so here we go when you walk inside here you have the little hallway and what we're gonna do is just open this guy come on in and immediately you're greeted by the quaintest most wonderful little looking room Ever. This place is just beautiful. They have a TV that works. They have a fire stove. I'm gonna start a fire in just a second here. Beautiful dining table. I haven't unpacked any of my stuff yet. They've got a kitchen. I'm warming up the food right now so I can cook this little pizza I got. If you come up the stairs into this place, this is the master bedroom. So we have the greatest be bedroom you could ask for. And then look, at this view, oh my goodness, this is the ocean right here, all right? And Ingun says that you can see the Northern Lights from here right now. If the clouds clear up, I will be able to see the Northern Lights. She says anyways, we'll see and see what it, what it turns out to be. But this is, this is like the dream scenario right now. All the books we could ask for, mostly Norwegian, so I guess it's not gonna be a ton of reading for me. If you come through the bathroom outside, the coolest part about this is that this is a rain-fed uh, system that they have running water to. So it rains so much here in Norway. It's raining right now, right? They have this huge barrel that's filled up and then it pumps water to everything else in the house. We have drinking water here just in case you don't want to drink the rainwater, but like everything else from the showers uh, to the toilet, to the sink the run it like the running water is all rain water and it's just perfect it's just perfect so it's eco-friendly beautiful uh casa rosa up on top of the hill and then the i mean probably the best part of all of it is just the location so you look at you look at the view of this place and it is unlike any other place i've ever stayed ever before this is norway in its raw form and we're i just don't even know where to start with all the things to do there's hiking i uh, i can run down to the city whenever i want this is just perfect and this is what a travel experience is all about so i guess let's get started
It's my second day at the cabin. It's about 5.30 at night right now, and you can see my cabin way up there on the top. A little red speck. I'm really on top of the mountain here. It's interesting. I'm kind of trying to find my, my way around right now, and it's pretty out here. This little house is pretty out here. So there's a cool lake, uh, but I think most of the next 10 days I spend are just going to be a sort of an isolation, working, hiking, yoga. <laughs> I think it's going to be great. Let's go dunk the head in the lake real quick and we'll head back up for dinner tonight. Made it to the lake. <laughs> I got to talk about this place for a second because this is less of a lake and more of a marshland. If you look down at the ground here, every step I take is stepping in this stuff just soaking wet all the time so going through this environment with shoes probably isn't the move i might switch strategies and just start going barefoot but one of the good news things i have found is if you look at the little open areas like this you can see animals have been here i just found droppings that looked pretty big too big to be a deer and that likely means that i'm in the home of the red deer or the red hort i think is what they call it in norwegian this is a very special animal that <laughs> only lives over here. It's a relative of the elk, technically the same species as an elk, but they have different phenotypic variances. They look different. They're actually like a huge red deer with these massive antlers. So that's absolutely gonna be a goal for the rest of my time here in Norway, is to hopefully stumble across one of these red deer that are making these trails down here by the lake. But that's more red deer droppings. I think they're red deer anyways, I really hope. So we're here in Norway, I'm gonna head back up. It's getting late and I don't wanna be walking through this in the cold. But figuring out what to do and how to explore this environment is still gonna take some getting used to. What I'm thinking is I'm probably just going barefoot from here on out. I'll make take a swim in the lake and we'll go for a big trip in a couple days here. Well, for right now, back to the cabin, back to the cycle. Oh, look at this, remember I was talking about red deer. That's absolutely a red deer antler scraping where the deer scrape the velvet off their antlers. They are here. Oh God, we're gonna find one. Let's go. I went home that night and cooked myself dinner along with a plan on how I was going to find these red deer while I was here. They're a notoriously elusive animal. So I spent the next probably three and a half days just searching. I'd wake up in the morning, do my little morning yoga session out on the hill, uh, get to work, get some work done, eat some food, and then I'd be out back on the mountain searching for these deer. I found a lot of signed deer prints, uh, a lot of bedding areas, and I even saw two little doe red deer off in the distance at one point, but they were so small, so elusive, and so hard to find. I just couldn't ever really get some good footage of them. So after a few days out there, I decided that it was time for a change in strategy. So I woke up early in the morning and headed down into the city of Trondheim, over six miles away from my little cabin. I had no idea how, how I was gonna get there. Uh, luckily, public transportation is a very friendly thing in Europe. It's cold enough today, I actually put on a face mask. Like, look at the frost. It's cold in Norway. <laughs> I just got off the bus here in Trondheim, Norway. Welcome to downtown. I spent the past two day looking for red deer two days looking for red deer in the mountains up at my little mountain hideout. And I've had a lot of fun doing it, but zero success so far. So today the plan is go downtown, get some food. I'm also out of food at the cabin, so I gotta do a little bit of grocery shopping down here. But I haven't had the chance to walk around downtown Europe ever before in my life, I don't think. So this is gonna be really fun. Let's go see. Well, we can get into in Trondheim, baby. <laughs> so I seem to have found my way into another mall, Norwegian mall. This one, however, has a Thai restaurant I can see upstairs. Don't know if it's open early in the morning. We're gonna go check. 
So it says there's a Thai restaurant right here. But I walk in and there's clothing stores. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Just went to the grocery store, packed up some stuff in my bags. Now we're ready to go back to the cabin and continue the search for red deer for the next eight days or so that I'm here. Uh, but doesn't mean that we can't see some cool stuff on our way out of, Nor of uh, Tron time. This is an old church built in 1739. In the United States, we have nothing that's this old. Significant structures in the United States for like late 1700s, early 1800s. Now you go to Europe, man, even Norway, which is one of, I guess, the newer European countries. You have some old buildings. Like this thing is so cool. Look at this, I found the science center and you can see me right here holding up the camera so you can look at how hot my face is you can see how cold it actually is out here that is super cool whoa here's another fun thing to see if you google a picture of trondheim norway the first thing you're going to see that comes up on images the pictures of these houses on the water this seems to be for some reason to me like a typical european scene uh, people just built on the water. I don't know why that is. There's some sort of historical significance and there's a Norwegian name for this. If you know what it is, drop it in the comments below and let me know. But I haven't been able to figure out what makes these houses so special yet in Trondheim, but they're pretty famous as you look all the way down the way. Uh, people love them. I'm gonna go walk across the bridge. <laughs> Yo, check this thing out. Some sort of old fort. Let's, let's go inside and look at this a little closer. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but right now I'm on a fort built in 1681 called Kreistinen Fistnin. <laughs> I'm not sure if I got it right, but I've been to quite a few forts. I went to one in Spain. I've been to a couple in the United States and of all the ones I've been to, there would not be a better place to be than this back in 1681. Looking out at this with your cannons. Oh, you'd feel so safe looking out at the ocean. This place is sweet. And check out this massive church in the middle of town. A lot of places like that here in Europe, I think. So let's see what else we can find out. Maybe go stick our head in a cannon or something. <laughs> check this cannon out. Just how massive this thing is. They plugged up the, the barrel so I can't stick my head in it. But can you just imagine something like this shooting and taking off a mile to go hit a ship it would be one of the wildest things ever it would probably be like invaders come up the river right here right and then they have all these cannons facing towards the river so they're like you're gonna f with us man you gotta go through all our cannons this is this is crazy just how massive they are that's pretty cool <laughs> And that night I went back to the cabin was when the whole vibe of the trip changed. See, in Europe, there are old buildings. They don't build new houses, new apartment buildings quite the same way we do in Norway. And because of that, there are people that have died in these houses for sometimes hundreds of years. And this little cabin, I was up there in the top of the mountain on was just haunted. I'm not sure how much I believe in all this stuff, but I went home that night and things were scary. It was, there were boxes being moved. I felt like I had a kid crawling up on my bed one night. I woke up screaming. There was another night where I heard sheets being changed upstairs. And at 2 a.m. every night, it felt like something woke up upstairs where I would wake up with a chill and I just stopped sleeping. So it was horrifying. It was terrifying. Well, the last couple days I was there. So instead of staying the full time I'd booked, I decided to bail out, move up over 500 miles north to Bodo, Norway, even though I really didn't want to spend some more money on this trip. And start Start over, start a fresh leaf looking for the Northern Lights, and that's where I'll catch up with you in the next part of this video. And hopefully everything works out all right, but the good news is my chances to see both Red Deer and the Northern Lights just skyrocketed because I bit the bullet and spent a little bit more money on this trip right now. So really excited to go up north, really excited to take you with me. I'm gonna probably turn off the camera for the next two days until I get up to Bodo, Norway. And very much looking forward to seeing you there. If I have any more clips coming, of course, I'll let you know. They should be good stuff. But otherwise, I'll see you in Bodo coming very soon. See you soon.